In the recent video I made about Jeff sitting down with Trisha Paytas and Tana Mojo for an episode of Jeff FM, I mentioned that they talked a lot about the vlog squad and one of the things that was brought up did not make Natalie look good at all. The three of them were ranking the vlog squad members from best to worst and when Jonah was brought up, he said that Jonah didn't have his back and didn't even want him to make his own documentary about what happened to him, feeling like David was going to look bad. And Jeff then went on to talk about how during the editing process of the documentary, Natalie and David wanted to make changes and edits to it so he didn't look bad. And they seemed to have no care in the world for how Jeff was actually doing because they would ask about how the documentary was going while he was fresh out of surgery. He revealed text messages that Natalie had sent his team and now he's taking to Twitter to confirm these are in fact legit receipts. He doesn't want anyone calling him a liar or anything so he brought everything to Twitter with the dates and timestamps and all. So the text that Jeff had shown in the recent Jeff FM were from Natalie to his team and if you guys didn't see that video. This is what the text said. Hi, I just saw Jeff's tweet. Don't want to bother him, but how'd the edit turn out? Good. We cut out the screenshots and changed some verbiage. He's in bad shape today though. Okay, cool. Did you guys add the teaser stuff for the positive note at end? Hi, talked to Jeff yesterday and don't want to bother him or really anyone too much, but can't help checking in. How's everything looking for him and the next ep? Good. Gonna try and have it done and posted by tomorrow. Okay, dope. Don't want to stress anyone out, but would love to see it. Any chance we can come by? It's it's not ready. Tomorrow morning would be better or later, maybe later tonight. I still can't believe she just brushed past them telling her he wasn't doing well. It's just so crazy to me to only seemingly care about how David was going to look in the dock rather than care about how Jeff was actually doing. Like the whole reason there is a dock is because he's suffering and you guys don't even seem to care. And did they not think their attitudes about it all weren't going to bite them back? But like I said the other day, Jeff was tweeting out all the receipts and started with this video of the three of them sitting and watching the edits of the doc. He said, I'm lucky I had good people around me that saw this BS for what it was. And I said, just don't jump without me. I don't want this accident to turn me into a seat. So make sure you don't jump without me. Jeff's real friends at the time could see how horribly they were treating Jeff just coming out of surgery and making him sit there and watch these edits. He posted a screenshot of the date and time this video was taken on Snapchat. It was taken on April 23rd, 2021 at 7.22 p.m. And it was just shortly after he had had surgery because earlier that day, he had taken a photo of himself and his eye is stitched shut. There's blood. I'm going to blur it out. But you can tell he's just not in good condition. And this was at 3 p.m. that day. And at 7 is when Natalie and David were making him sit there and try and make David look better in this documentary. It's honestly just so frustrating because Jeff didn't even want to sue in the beginning. And had David been a good friend and actually seemed to care about his well-being, they probably wouldn't even be talking about lawsuits right now. I mean, thank God Jeff did wake up to the reality of who he was dealing with and is hopefully able to get some sort of justice for what happened. And because all that has come out about David, he stopped making videos and he's stopped doing insane stunts for views and putting his friends in harm's way. But it's just wild to think about the fact that David really could have unfortunately just gotten away with this, no consequences, if he was just nice and he couldn't even do that. Like, isn't that crazy? Like things could be so different right now if David had just been nice. Jeff later tweeted once again, showing the text with Natalie and his team. And we can see that this was two days later that she reached out about the edits. And that's when she seemed to not have a care in the world about how Jeff was doing, which Jeff literally tweeted out, Okay, cool. And I very much remember that when Natalie, David, and Jason all sat down to talk about the accident in the one episode that they did titled Discussing What Happened, they talked about how they didn't know how to be there for Jeff because Jeff is this tough guy and, you know, David just didn't know how to really give him what he needed at the time, which makes it seem like Jeff was pushing them away and it wasn't because of anything David or Natalie were doing. Like he was just pushing them away because he's this tough guy and he can handle things. And David was using this as an excuse as to why he couldn't be there for him, which is so crazy to hear them say now after just reading these text messages from Natalie and seeing the timeline of them 
making him edit his documentary fresh out of surgery. Because how hard is it to understand? You want someone to be there for you and really be there for you. Not just reach out and hang out with you because you want to save your own reputation and edit a documentary and make some edits. Like what? I've never had a harder time communicating with a person than I have with him during this. Um, and, and you know, it's for multiple reasons. It's for me being bad at that, not knowing how to handle like such a serious situation. Um, and I also didn't know if you needed space. Like every time I would talk to him, Jeff is like a guy who like is very tough when you're to his face and is like, I don't need this. I don't need you doing this. Like I'm good. I'm strong. But then when you create that distance, it's like, what the f Yeah. He's not, f not, not talking to me. And then like when my other friends would go talk to him, he'd tell him, he's like, if I ever see Dave, I'm going to beat his ass. Right. So it's like, and that happened multiple times for multiple different friends where he would like complain about so like i wouldn't know like do you want to see me more so you can beat my ass like i don't know <laughs> i don't know right. i don't know how to go about that like seriously hearing that back and then knowing what we know now is wild like they really got on that podcast and tried to make it seem like it was jeff's fault that they weren't there for him like I'm sure he was telling everyone that he wanted to beat you up because you're breathing down his neck, trying to make edits to this documentary instead of being like, hey, how are you feeling today? Like, what? Everyone can see your true intentions. And even if Jeff wasn't willing to accept it at the time, I'm sure he felt that energy or didn't feel up for sitting in the chair and rewatching what happened to him over and over and over again in these edits with David. And I'm sure that's why he didn't want to see you that much. And it's wild that David went on to say that he understood if Jeff didn't want to see him because he was associated with such a bad time in his life. But like, how can you say that, but also have Natalie bug him over the documentary and then go to where he's staying and force him to watch this documentary about it all right after surgery that accident is so bad where like i would understand if he wouldn't want to see me because i'm associated with like yeah such a sh time like what a way to remind him about what happened when you're saying and admitting you would understand if he didn't want to be reminded of the accident there's something so twisted about the fact that he knows that it's effed up to like remind him of the accident, but that's exactly what he was doing. It truly is just blowing my mind hearing this all back. But as Jeff was posting all the receipts and showing the timeline of events, Trisha replied saying, the okay cool is next level psychopath. And other people have been coming for Natalie as this has been brought to light. Her Instagram comments are filled with people talking about it, writing, imagine getting told someone is in bad shape and then saying, okay, cool, and caring more about edits for a video. Justice for Jeff. Make David pay for Jeff's surgeries. Team Jeff. People are even quoting her own text to her in the comments, writing, he's in bad shape today, though. Okay, cool. Did you guys add the teaser stuff for the positive note at the end? Okay, cool. Can we come over? Jeff said that he was hoping that he has his day in court because he does have all this information that he's sitting on. And like I mentioned when I cover Jeff on Trisha's podcast, it sounds like there's even more to be shared about Natalie. So did he end up paying for all your hospital bills? <laughs> That's a uh, that's gonna be fun when we get to that in trial. Because Natalie said yes, they did, and he said yes, they did, and you were like, no, I can't wait my to expose sucks. Natalie's lies. She's next level, like, like crazy. Sh that's something I want to avoid because it's a big part of the case. Yeah. She's scary. <clears throat> but yeah, the truth will come out. And on Jeff FM, while ranking the Vlog Squad members, when Natalie came up, Tiana reminded Jeff about how in Casey Neistat's documentary on David Dobrik, Natalie tried to say that Jeff only got on the excavator to try and impress her because he had a crush on her. Did she say Do that you, that you got on the crane because you had a crush on her and you wanted yeah, to impress her? Oh, oh, yeah. Thank you for reminding me that. That's right. Yeah, she said that in the documentary <laughs> in Casey's thing. Like, uh, yeah, I saw Casey's doc. Like, uh, you know, did you watch it no because casey uh, made like a doc on the whole thing the casey neistat documentary was never released for the public and i don't think that it ever will be it premiered at south by southwest last march and was only available for those who attended the festival or bought an online pass to screen the film casey barely promoted it and at the time reached out to ethan klein for advice because he didn't know how to handle being in any sort of drama and that's what he felt the doc would bring and i think that it might be the reason it was never put out publicly because i don't think he wants to be a part of the david dobrik conversation but he started making this documentary at the start of david's career 
thinking it was going to be this inspiring story of this young guy rising to fame on YouTube. But it obviously took a very dark turn and I think that Casey just didn't want to be a part of it anymore and that's why he didn't publicly put it out. Now last year I did watch the film but that was over a year ago at this point so I don't remember what Natalie said exactly but it is just crazy that Tana remembered that she said that because what kind of statement is that like what is that even doing for anyone saying that jeff had a crush on you and that's why he got on the excavator like what why why are you saying that it's just so weird but that's what has come out as of right now and the things that people have been saying to natalie as a result of this but let me know your thoughts in the comments i love you guys so much and i will talk to you in the next video bye guys